So here I am today, not to talk about what I have done, but it's more about how many times I have failed in my life and how much struggle I had in the past. But before I start my story, I will just show you a book. People talk a lot about self-help books so far. <laughs> I brought a book today. And uh, about four weeks ago, my best friend gave me this book. The title is Your One Word. Sorry to advertise the book. Right here in the back of the book, the writer say and question and challenge yourself. If you use one single word to describe your whole life, the meaning of your life, the target to your life, what would that word be? And he continues, I'm sure many of you here will not have the answer yet. Is it true? Yes. But things have come, when I, when I read that question about four weeks ago, two minutes later I say, oh, I found mine. It came so easy, it came so instantly. And I started to prepare for my TED talk today and I look at my whole life journey, 42 years of living on this earth working as a teacher for 20, nearly 20 years. And I started to look at everything I have gone through. And so that's what I'm going to share with you. I have my key work here, but I'm not going to show you until the end. I'll keep that as a secret. And I want you to walk through stories in my life, and hopefully you find out why I came to realize the purpose of my life. And I want to share with you with that. So, story time, okay? Um, I was born into a family of six children. Five boys and one girl in a, a very remote area in the Lung province. In the 1970s, life was just so huge, struggle for many people. And just raising up six children in a family was a huge struggle for my parents. Plus, my father used to work for the US Navy before 1975. And so, life in the 70s was a little bit insecure at that time. And everybody in my village at that time, people stopped going to school. All of the kids would just stay at home and help with the family. And so, being born into that family, the first thing I experienced was actually I had a very carefree life. So much fun as a child, in the field with the buffalo, with our friends. But it's also the first moment in my life I started to experience the feeling of shameful, the feeling of being discriminated because you are poor. And I started to see tears from my mom's eyes every time she could experience the feeling of being looked down, not for her, but for her children. And deep down, I started to realize what it means to try to become successful right at that time. But my life at that time was so quiet until the age of five, something terrible happened to me. My parents sent me to school. <laughs> <laughs> I had long days just playing with my friends and I enjoy more in the field rather than in the school. But I could not understand in the middle of the village there where everybody cared more about food and clothes my father was very committed to education. And I cannot remember how many times he asked everybody in the family to sit down in the evening with the oil lamp in the middle in the 1970 and 1980. And he kept reminding us about what would happen if we decide to quit school. The first thing he would do is to get everybody out of the family if we ever thought about not going to school. So he was very committed, and it's still a very secret to me now like, where the idea came from in his mind, and everybody else, even in my family, going against that education. So being in that situation and in that context, I, I learned the first lesson of being grateful to having such a caring and loving mom and a committed father in my life. But then, you know, I know that I could not escape from education. I, I prefer, sometimes I feel jealous with other kids in my village because they have long days playing. I sacrifice half of my day at school 
not enjoying, to be honest. Sorry, teachers. Um, and then I become a teacher, right? It's tricky. Okay. But my, my life went on to secondary school and then high school very quiet. The only thing I could do is to stay focused. I was very obedient at that time, just listening to my parents and the teachers all the time. I tried to study hard, but strangely, the best score I got in high school was 6.72. I, I could never be a good student in high school, even I know that I have tried a lot. I was so bad in high school. Um, but I did start to feel that I enjoyed more school. And this is also the stage. At school, I started to experience what people call failure. At the end of year 12, I took the university entrance exam. I failed. First year. Interestingly, I didn't feel sad. Not disappointed. But I began to see in the eyes of people who loved me and who wanted the best for my life. The look of disappointment and more expectation from me. So I felt sad for two days packed my luggage, going back to Kentucky City, spending one year reviewing the lesson, taking the exam again the second year, and luckily I passed, becoming a student at the university. But I hit the wall again, Ryan, the first day I stepped into the university. I was among 255 students at the university at that time, not understanding a word of English. And so, in the first month of the university, many times I have thought about quitting university, going back home. Life is easier as a farmer, right? But then I felt so lucky at that time to have one of my teachers at the university. He understood all of the psychological process, the students at that time. He sat down patiently, explaining, encouraging, and supporting. So we overcame the problem, thanks to that teacher. That's the second person that I felt so grateful to in my life. And all I could do in my four years was to stay focused. I, I never considered myself to be an intelligent person, but I did work very hard through four years. No playing, no Facebook, no computer at that time, luckily. <laughs> so after four years, rewards can. I graduated top one in my class out of 255 students. It was the biggest achievement ever in my life at that time. After that, I was granted with a position at the university to become a lecturer. Wow, you can fly. Though I felt so happy, but I could see the happiness more in my parents' eyes, in the people who have trusted me, rather than for myself. So, if you look around, you see a lot of successful people in life. My, my success at that time was nothing compared to others. But if I put into my position as somebody from a poor family, from a remote area, struggling through life to survive at the university, and achieving such success at the beginning in their life, is so extraordinary, so significant to me at that time. So my journey began here at this university in the past 19.5 years. I began working here in 2001 as a teacher, as a lecturer. The first five years for me was amazing. I really enjoyed working. And a lot of enjoyment came, but then I hit the wall again, and this time it's even more serious. I had enough knowledge and skills that I learned from university to function well as a teacher. But then in life, I was so terrible. I look back at my life and I say, wait a minute, nowhere in your school and in your life has somebody taught you how to live a good life, how to stand up when you fall, how to behave well in society, and how to be a good person, not to talk about how to become successful. I didn't have a clue. And as many times I fell, I hit my head, pleading, I could not find an answer at that time. So what I did, I observed the way people around me, 
how do they live? I started to pick up wrong ideas. I match on, become very competitive, try to work crazily, so to be what I compete for money, for material, for fame and position. And to some extent, I was successful. I got promoted at the university. Then at the same time, I began my business and started to try to build up my own school. I worked crazily for about five years. And I felt so amazed by the achievement I got during this time. But then, in the year 2012, I began to hit the biggest wall in my life. I lost all sense of meaning about the reason for my existence in this life. I started to feel so tired and realized this is not the way you should lead your life. And I actually shared with nobody at that time because I put on myself the identity of somebody who is quite successful. And I didn't allow myself to complain or to complain and to reveal secrets about moments in your life that you feel so weak and you want somebody to share. So, no solution actually. I decided to apply for the scholarship to go away, move away from my comfort zone. And the first three months in Australia for me was amazing. Remember the picture that she shows you? I felt like I escaped from the noisy life in the traffic to somewhere very quiet, very peaceful, when I have time and energy to contemplate and to think carefully about my life. And looking back at the time that I have tried for power, success, money, and position, I would say, I, I don't claim this time because it has trained me to become so strong like a warrior. But when I look at that and I say, these were the most terrible, the darkest time of my life, if I look at how I experienced that. But thanks for me to the experience, to the people that have met in my life back in Australia for four years. New ideas come, and the people I have met during this time have taught me so many lessons that I felt like I'd just been reborn one more time. That is the time when I actually begin to think more about the meaning of my life and why I'm here. I decided to come back to Vietnam after finishing and things become so clear to me about what I want to do for my future. Now, when you started to see the light somewhere about how you are going to live your life, things become so easy. Every single decision I made since then, back in the year 2015, becomes so easy to me because I do understand who I am. And every decision I make, I'm able to justify and to explain clearly to the people around me. And honestly sharing with you, in the past five years, I have made the biggest number of decisions in my life. I moved away from being someone who is more obedient to someone who can stand on my feet by myself. And a lot of the decisions I make so far seem to depart a little bit from the traditional values and what sometimes my parents want me to do. But now, because I understand me more, and I realize there's a lot of things that I need to challenge. Not that I don't show the respect to them, but I started to question the meaning for myself. And secretly, in the past few years, that they realized that I have lived my life to the full. And I started to feel what is genuine happiness to people. So if you look back at my life journey, it's a snapshot into what I have been doing. You see deep down every step, every success that I have found. I started to realize that somebody laid the first step and bricks for you to step up. It can be your family members, your parents, it can be your teachers, it can be your friends. And if you observe enough, you started to realize that you should not feel brown 
of yourself too much every time you achieve something in life because you are not alone. You have tried your best, of course. Then underlying every step of success there is somebody who's standing and support you. And the day I realized how grateful I should be to life, life has become so beautiful and fulfilling. And two years ago, I began a new habit that every day I learned to practice. Thinking about how grateful I should be. Every day, two minutes at least, I would think about something or someone I have met or happened to me in a day that I should feel thankful for. And since then, I learned to be more humble. I learned to be more responsible. I learned to care more for other people. I stopped complaining, and I enjoy almost every moment and everything I do in my life. And that is also the time when I started to realize the real happiness in your life actually doesn't come from the money. It doesn't come from the material that you have. Simply, it doesn't come only about your inner peace for yourself, but it comes from the feeling of sharing and helping other people and seeing that they achieve things in their life. And so, the words that I have come up for myself is the word devoted. And that would be the direction that I will continue to live my life in the future. You might have different understanding of what it means to be devoted. But the word that I want to say in Vietnamese is the word Phong Sư. And that is only when you feel that it's your responsibility to help people and to make them better and to see the people around you find their happiness and success. That is when you find that you really feel happy for yourself and that a long-lasting happiness. So, for the people here out there, if you are still struggling to find a way for yourself and you're hitting the walls like me in the past, I would kindly advise you to do this practice with me. Every day, learn to be grateful. And hopefully, you will see life so beautiful and meaningful to live. Thank you.